Once your new tablet's up and running, the only thing between you and your own creativity is understanding all of the benefits of using a pen. There are three tips I like to give everyone who is new to using a pen. How the pen relates to the screen, how you hold your pen, and how the buttons on the pen work to make your life better once you take the time to master them. The pen does not behave like a mouse. That's why you bought it. Unlike a mouse, the pen has a specific relationship with your desktop. Each corner of the tablet's active area, marked by the matrix of dots on your tablet, maps to the corresponding corner of your desktop screen area. This means that you no longer have to find your mouse pointer on screen to know which way you want to move it. If you want to reach something in the middle of the screen, put the pen in the middle of the tablet and you'll most likely be pretty close. If you find yourself trying to reach for the file menu by scooting to it, and you will if you're new to tablets, stop. And remember you bought a superior input device. Then just pick up the pen and put it up near the top left corner of the tablet. This behavior is precisely what makes the pen the best creative tool available. The most important thing about how you hold your pen is that you make it comfortable and you make it your own. The second most important thing though is that you don't accidentally press the rocker switch on the side of the pen. The end closest to the tip is set up to pan or scroll when you're in an application that supports it. The end of the switch furthest from the tip is a right click, which you can use without touching the pen to the tablet. You'll also quickly notice that the pointer on screen will move without touching the pen to the surface as well. When the tip of the pen touches the tablet, it acts the same as holding down the left mouse button, which, in graphic applications, is how you would try and paint if you were using a mouse. There are many ways to practice using the pen. One of the best ways I've found is to play a game like Solitaire, or any other simple game that requires clicks, touching the pen to the tablet, right clicks, using the upper end of the side switch, double clicks, tapping twice in the same place on the tablet, and click and drag, which is as simple as touching the tip to the tablet and dragging it to a new location. Just remember, if you don't want your tablet to do anything, make sure you aren't touching any of the buttons, including the tip. I've seen the pen held in many ways. I've also found that for people who hold the pen back further, the side switch may be easier to use with your index finger. For people who grip it closer to the tip, I've found that rolling the switch into the thumb is usually easier. This can be done either with the switch above the thumb and in view, or beneath. Either way, make sure the switch is not being held down unless you mean to. I would encourage you to try all of these and see which one is comfortable. Or, if you hold the pen differently, by all means, try whatever works for you. Once you've gotten the hang of using the pen for everyday activities, you may find that the side switch could be put to better use. You can easily change the settings for these and every other aspect of the tablet in the tablet control panel. The fastest way to get to the preferences is from the pen and button settings option in the Wacom desktop center, which should be running in the background unless you've chosen to turn it off. You can also get to your preferences through the control panel on Windows or by selecting preferences from the Apple menu on Mac. From the tablet settings window, select the pen and from here you can change the settings for either end of the side switch. I use double click all the time, so I'll frequently set the lower switch of my pen to double click from the clicks submenu. Because it's always accessible right there in your pen, some other common settings I've seen for this switch include undo, command or control Z, which you would set by choosing keystrokes, or even the option or alt modifier, which you could choose by selecting modifiers from the list. All the buttons and side switches follow the same logic for programming. Most of these tablets are both pen and touch. This means that as you get used to your new pen, or even for everyday navigation, you can use the whole tablet active area, marked by the dotted matrix, as a touchpad. Most, if not all, the touch gestures you may be familiar with should also work on the tablet, assuming they're supported by the program you're using. If you want to turn off touch and just use the Intuos as a pen-only tablet, toggle the switch on the right side of the top edge of the tablet, which turns touch on and off. The best advice to a new tablet user of any kind is a three-day challenge. As with any tool, it takes practice and dedication. Unplug your mouse for three days and practice using pen and touch for everything you do. Many people never go back to a mouse at all, and even if you do, you'll at least have learned the many benefits of using a pen.